This is the Balkan Adventures podcast. Everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. This podcast relies entirely on supporters who help to keep a sponsor and advert free to our community at patreon.com. You can pledge as little as $1 a month with early access to content and free giveaways. You will find a banner to our Patreon community on our website at balkanadventures.co. Thanks for helping us develop the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Balkan Adventures podcast with me, David Bailey. In this episode, I'm talking to Mustafa Panietta. Mustafa is a born and bred Sarajevan and an expert tour guide. I talked to Mustafa to find out why he loves his city of Sarajevo so much. So for the next 20 to 25 minutes or so, enjoy finding out more about Sarajevo. My first question, though, to Mustafa was why did he decide to become a tour guide? Uh, That's a... It's a good question, but uh, here, here in Bosnia, in my country, and probably in uh, similar countries, uh, and when I say similar, I mean like a country with a high with a high unemployment uh, rate and where the, there is uh, not many possibilities to find a job. Here, basically, there is no that thing like, uh, you know, why do you why do you do that job? Do you like it or not? There is no such thing like that. Most of time, basically, for most of us, why do you do that job? It's because I got a chance to do it, you know, and that's the only income I could have. So that's the that's you know, there's no romantic be, uh, idea behind that thing. Like ah yeah, because I'm passionate about it. That's it's not nothing to do with that. Then again. I'm doing this job, I am passionate about it. So it's not that idea who got me into this job. It's the money, which is regular thing, you know. I need money to survive. But then again, when I started doing this job, you know, I found myself in it. I really like it, you know, and it's... I Actually, I, to be honest, I don't I don't take this as a job, you know. Every, every You know, I, I take this as a some sort of like a holiday. And every time when I'm with my group, I don't see the you know guests as tourists or I, I see them as my friends you know i'm just traveling with them and explaining the things you know how i see them and what i've experienced them and that's what i like to tell them about my experiences and stuff like that so to me to be, i don't see that as a job really so it's and as, as such it's not really hard to do that thing you live in one of the most amazing cities in the world there are cities that people talk about, like Paris and London and New York, but Sarajevo is very unique in, in so far as it's in a most beautiful country and it's had such a diverse history. How difficult has it been to sort of like explain that diversity of, I don't know, from before the Ottomans came here to the activities that led to the First World War and so on? How do you prioritise what to tell people? I mean, pro- probably it's, uh, uh, it would be it would be tough to explain. I mean, everything can be explained, but for us, in a, in in relates when when it comes down to Sarajevo as city, it is a capital city. It's a bigger city in Bosnia, but still, in comparison with the other European capitals, it's tiny. It's small. The only capital which is bigger. Uh, which is smaller than us from if we talk about these ex Yugoslav republics is uh, Slovenia, Ljubljana. But in a way, it's pretty small city. So when it comes down to that, uh, it's really easy explaining and actually connecting different periods of time, history, since everything can be, uh, you know, walked. You can walk from everything is actually concentrated within three or four hundred meters there. And you can feel it. You can really sense what I, what I was talking about. For example, you have probably the cities, let's say, let's say Istanbul or something like that. But that's a huge city, and you, it's probably harder uh, to get that feeling since it's a huge city. It's not so visually uh, so easy to, to you know you can't cope with that so easily. So in Sarajevo, while I'm talking, while I'm explaining the history. Uh, starting from medieval times, then uh, arrival of the Ottomans, then after that the Austro-Hungarians, then the socialist uh, Tito, then blah, 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 blah. Everything basically, while I'm talking that, we are walking and you can see that, which would be really 
let's say, hard, if not impossible, to do in other cities. Why? Because you would need to go from point A to point B really far distances to see different periods. Here, it's just everything is here. For example, there's one street, and we are known because of that in Sarajevo, uh, which is dividing line. And I, every time on my tour, I, I emphasize that's the most important part of the tour because that is the dividing line between the East and the West. And when, when I'm standing there with, with, with the guests on that line, that's a tiny street, and I point out uh, on the East direction, and when you're looking at, towards the East, you can actually see the cobble streets, the wooden shops, the mosque, the minaret, and you have the feeling that you're in Istanbul. Then when you face yourself on the same spot, when you face yourself towards the west, you see the Austro-Hungarian architecture, just like being somewhere in Vienna. So that's what I'm saying, you know, it's really, it's just like sudden uh, difference. And not only that, but I always, you know, explain that we are, I believe, the only city in the world where you, you can hear once a week at the same time call for pray from the mosque bells from Catholic Church and bells from Orthodox Christian Church. Yeah, I was in Sarajevo back in November of last year uh, and it was on a Sunday morning and uh, I was, I, I, they said now you've got to go open the window and experience this and it is, it's a very emotional experience isn't it, to hear it all? Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, to me uh, since I was born and raised here, never lived anywhere outside of Sarajevo, it's nothing special why? Because I get used to that but when I started traveling a little bit outside of Bosnia, seeing some other cities, uh, they're nice, they're beautiful, but let's say not so diverse like we are. And then I started respecting um, uh, the place I'm coming from. So it's easier now for me to see what, what do we have here. And it's not, for example, uh, you know, now these days everyone talks about multicultural life, blah, blah, multicultural this, multicultural that, you know, uh, that's okay. But you have more or less every city over one million today, they are multicultural, there is no nation which is not present there, that's okay. But you would hardly see that these nationalities, these religions, civilizations are there for ages. What, what I mean is that you won't see like you will see, you would see in Sarajevo really or, or to the Christian church from, I don't know, 1539, that from the same period you see the uh, Muslim mosque, then you see the old Jewish synagogue, then you see the Roman Catholic church, and that's all old, so it's not like uh, built today. So that's interesting from that perspective to see that actually civilizations were, you know, different civilizations were there from way, way back. This mixture of, of well, let's call them civilizations or cultures, and, it, and it's right. You can, you, you, wherever you turn, you'll see a minaret, and then you'll see the spire of a either an Orthodox or or, or a, uh, a Catholic church. But there's been a lot of influence in food as well, and I've noticed that. And within Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, I also know that there is. Um, I, 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 I don't know how to best describe it, but uh, people in the north say that the Banyuluka Chivap is best. People in Sarajevo say the Sarajevski Chivap is best. There's so much passion about different regions and different cities um, that I, I, I'm just blown away with it. I've never seen people so proud of where they've come from. And in Sarajevo, that's even more so, isn't it? Uh, it is, it is. Uh, I don't know, to, since I'm, I'm, I'm also a social, uh, sociologist and I always like to be uh, objective. And so it's not, I don't like bragging or, you know, myself, but at the same time, to be honest, uh, I can only say that you can go from uh, visit the neighboring countries or any ex-Yugoslav Republic, and usually you'll see from, from Slovenia to Macedonia or anywhere, to Serbia, you'll see, I don't know, signs like Bosnian this, Bosnian that, Bosnian chevapi, Bosnian pies, Bosnian commercials, why is that so? Well, because it's, you know, it's, it's definitely the best from Bosnia, you know. And we, okay, they are, I'm just talking about the uh, Chavapi and Paz. Why? Because that's authentic from here. We have all sorts of different other stuff, which is traditional, but obviously that's not our original since, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 percentage, maybe 40 percentage came from Ottomans. That means Turkish food. Then the rest you have uh, from Hungarians, from Austro-Hungarian time. You know, and then some influence from the Slavic tribes. But I would say that what we are known for here are Chevaapi and Pies. And to be honest, I'm not sure which one is a bigger taboo here. And I, when I say taboo, I mean like that's a must. When you come here, 
you know, that's, for example, there's a lot of Bosnians who are, who are living and working outside in some countries. And in the summertime, when they come back here to Bosnia to visit their families, first thing they're going to do, they'll go and have chavapi or pie, and then they'll visit their families, because it'll be really embarrassing for them to, you know, to admit their family, oh, I just went straight back to you and I haven't tried chavapi, or, you know, it'll be like, what happened, you know, are you going wrong way now, you know, so it's that's that's how big it is, and it's really, I don't know, to, to, to us, uh, that's uh, that's that's what we eat, actually, you know, like pies or chavaps. We were talking in the car, or rather you were talking in the car when Bruce asked you about what sort of music um, you particularly liked, and you said, you know, what... What you prefer is a diverse amount of, of music. I was really buzzing in the back because I'm into world music and you were playing a, a cool uh, world music CD. But when you go around Bosnia-Herzegovina, and especially when, you know, when we even got off the bus today, the traditional music of, of, of this particular region, you have to agree, has got more Turkish influence to it than, than Northern Europe. Or would you disagree with that? Uh, not, not the nor- Northern Europe. Uh, I'm... You know, I would say I would say definitely there is a Turkish influence, but at the same time, for example, you can feel uh, you can feel the influence of the of the klezmer, klezmer music. You know, so uh, that's kind of that mixture. Uh, I would say that definitely it is more Eastern than the Western, you know? and uh, that if we talk about uh, proper traditional music. Uh, that's I, I believe so definitely. Because I tell you, if you come to Sarajevo, you, you, you will certainly not only get these um, these wonderful smells as you go past everywhere, and and I don't think Mustafa. I mean, he was really trying hard, but I tell you, I don't think anybody can tell you what a, what it's like to walk past somewhere that is cooking chivap or cooking pie. The smells are just like magnetic. You're just you're just dragged in, and of course the sounds as well. When, when you're doing your tours with, with, with um, people that come to Sarajevo, what, what impressions do they bring with them when they arrive? So, you know, when you say, what do you want to see? What, what, how do they react? Well, uh, basically, they're, they're... OK, first, first time, when, when first day when they arrive, either in Sarajevo, Mostar or, or elsewhere, they're shocked. They're really shocked, positively shocked. Because uh, they didn't expect uh, to see that. What did they expect? Uh, they didn't expect anything. Because uh, unfortunately, as a, as a country, Bosnia Herzegovina, we don't do much of the promotion for outside. So we don't have that like a destination for tourism. So people don't know when you say Bosnia. Most of the, actually most of the guests who come to to Bosnia, you know, they they their friends. Later on, they admit that to me. You know, they, when they told their parents or friends, whatever, they always get the question like, why? Why are you going to Bosnia? Because, you know, and to be honest, I understand them. I don't blame them. Because it is really why. Since why would you go to Bosnia since what's there to see? No one knows because there is no that image. There's So what you're saying is it's a hidden gem, it's a hidden jewel. It is, it is definitely. It's still, I mean, it, tourism is getting bigger, definitely, but it's still not mass, you know, it's not mass tourism. It's not still, so it's, I would say definitely still undiscovered. Definitely, I, I believe it's still undiscovered, even though it's it's getting bigger every year. But uh, definitely, every every you know, at, at the end of their tr- stay here, uh, they all I don't know. But I I was surprised. Okay, I like my country. I'm I'm you know, but I, I was surprised to hear that a lot of them, and I really mean a lot. Uh, they say at the end, and they are saying that. Uh, it's definitely been one of the top five destinations uh, they've been. And most of my guests, uh, when I see their passports, when they're showing their stamps, and more or less they went all around the world. And that really says something to me, you know. They said to me, really, they, it's, it's been, like, definitely it's going to be like one of the top five destinations they see, in the, you know. And that's... I don't know. I believe that's a big thing to me. We're sat here, as, as I said earlier, on, on the Yahorina mountain, which is about four, 40 kilometers from... Less, uh, 25, 30 kilometers. Yeah, with an easy drive of, of, of the capital, Sarajevo. And you were also saying that, you know, I, I, I think the word cheap can be taken the wrong way in the English language sometimes, but there is world-class skiing facilities here at a third, if not more, off where people go skiing elsewhere in the world. 
Is that taking off now? Do people come here now for skiing or is that still, again, something that you need to work on to, to show people this hidden gem? I mean, 1984, there was the Olympics here, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, actually, uh, we had been to Olympics in 1984 and the only people, are not the only, but I would say most of the people who remembers that is the one uh, who, who used to live with us in the same country which was called Yugoslavia. So that's the Serbs, that's the Croats, Slovenians. So most of the guests today we have uh, on these mountains around uh, around Sarajevo uh, is de are definitely them. And they are coming, so the Serbs coming from Serbia, Croats from Croatia, Slovenians who have excellent mountains for the ski, they're also coming to Bosnia. Why? Because in comparison with their standard, it's 10 times cheaper to, to come here and to ski than to do it in their country. So the thing is, again, as I said, since we don't do any promotion, no one knows, no one knows that we have that. And I never ever met a guest, you know, coming from England or anywhere that they ever heard that we have some, I mean, like I understand them, probably someone did, but they don't expect that we have the mountains. They said, I didn't expect that, but I expect some planes or something like that. So they don't know that we have the mountains, you know, and basically in relation with that, why would they think that there is a ski uh, resorts here? And for sure, I always emphasize that we would never have a Winter Olympic Games here if it's not excellent uh, mountains, if it's not great uh, resorts and, and, and terrains for, for, for doing that. And what's, what's excellent is that basically you have uh, Yahorina mountain, you have Bjelašnica mountain, uh, 25, 30 kilometers from Sarajevo center, which is like, what, 30 minutes from, you know, from Sarajevo. So that's how close it is. So that, that's, that's I, I believe, is one of the key benefits of, of, of this location. Finally, um, as, as a tour guide, and going back to the original question about Sarajevo, what is your favorite thing, place, or story that you like to, to give your, your guests? Huh, it's, a, it's a tough question. Why? Because there is no, uh, there is no one story. You know, this, this thing, what I'm doing, this uh, tour guiding, tour leading, whatever you call it, can call it, it's a mixture of everything. It's uh, just finding the balance. Uh, for me, it's just finding the perfect balance. What should I give uh, to, to, to the people who came here to perfectly uh, explain uh, who are we actually because we are not so you know we are simple people but at the same time complicated our humor is complicated uh, the food and such so on and so on so I always tend to find a, a really perfect uh, mixture of that to, when, when, and when giving that to the guests and I really enjoy that that's my that's what that's what I, re what I really like when people ask me, ah, do you have any, you know, like funny anecdotes and stories? Of course, you know, I do have millions. Uh, it's hard to remember them all, of course. You know, I, for example, recent one which I had, uh, as already said, Sarajevo is quite small city, you know, even though it's capital, it's not big, it's not huge. So as such, it's uh, quite simple to navigate through, through Sarajevo. I never had anyone get lost. Uh, well, one situation, you know, after after one night spent in a city, I, next morning I asked one guest, you know, after spending the night in a pub, he went his way to hostel, I went my way, and in the morning I asked him, you know, oh, did you have problems uh, going back to the hostel, you know, was it easy? He said, yeah, yeah well, actually, it wasn't, uh, I was lost, you know, I'm like, hmm, really, you know, what do you mean lost? Because I never had anyone get lost. Yeah, yeah, I was lost. You know, I was looking uh, for, I don't know, half an hour. I was looking at the map. I couldn't find anything on the map. And at the end, I realized it's a map of Budapest, you know. <laughs> and I said, yeah, well, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. It's the same, you know. Budapest has the river. We have the river, you know. Like, it's the, it's the same thing, you know. <laughs> you could, <laughs> but at the end, of course, he managed it to, to, to get back, you know, to his hostel. So... Mustafa, thank you so much for, for being on this podcast. And, and if you're listening to this and you subscribe to the podcast, we'll be doing a lot more about Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, in the show notes, I'm going to put Mustafa's name, his contact email, uh, and any other information he wants 
to to give me check it out uh, if you want to come to Sarajevo which I thoroughly recommend you do and you're the sort of person that doesn't feel comfortable walking around on your own there is a guy here that will make your life so happy and so interesting that you'll most probably be coming back and as he said this will become one of your top five places to visit so that's it share like and subscribe to the podcast I will catch you next week to find out more about us and where we live why not check out our blog at an Englishman in the Balkans.com. See you next time.